Debris trucks are out daily to try to clean up St. John Parish. It was one of the areas hardest hit by Ida and the area that will likely take the longest to recover. Parish President Jacqueline Hotard is joining us this morning with an update. Thank you so much for joining us. We remember a month ago after the storm, we could barely get in contact with you. There was not even cell service in the parish. Kind of get us up to date on where you are now. Yes, thank you. And cell service, it is a little better. There are still some days where we struggle with um, communications. I'm on the phone daily with our communications providers telling them how important it is that we're able to communicate. And so they are working on increasing their coverage in our area. You mentioned debris as, as we um, came into this segment. We've picked up 355,000 cubic yards of debris. I realize there's still a lot of debris out there, and if you still have a pile in front of your home, um, it's a lot to look at. But it is being picked up very quickly. We've actually doubled the amount of debris that we've picked up in previous storms, so it is going very well. One of the bigger topics for our residents right now, long-term uh, emergency housing. We are on those calls every day with GOSEP. In fact, there's another call today. I believe the state opened up bids yesterday on emergency housing. We've had about 1,500 residents express the need for long-term emergency housing. I believe this will be a combination of uh, mobile home parks and individuals with a FEMA trailer, if, if um, we can recall that, in front of their home so that they can assist in their rebuild process. And we're working on both of those efforts. We've submitted all of that information to the state and there is another call today. So all of that can be ironed out. Yeah, I know there's a lot to be done. A lot of the basics you guys were missing right after the storm, power, water service. I saw you guys sent out a notice saying that water bills for September are being waived. Kind of update us on power outages. Right now, we have about 220 people without power. At one point, it was around 50. What Energy explained to us is sometimes when grids come up, they find other problems. But we were about 50 without power, and those were customers who had extensive damage. We're asking those individuals to call our planning and zoning office at 985 651 5565 so we can work through that process. But we're hovering around 200 without power. All of our water has been restored and there are no more boil water advisories. We're so grateful to our utilities departments for that. There are no boil water advisories. So we're, we're looking good with power and water and we're working through some of those challenges. We get a lot of questions about permits as well. We've put out some information. If you're just making non-structural repairs to your home, your sheetrock and your siding and your shingles and all of those types of things, you do not need a permit. Please rebuild um, if that's what you choose to do right now. Structural changes, however, we want to make sure we're in compliance with the building code and that our residents have safe repairs. So those repairs need a permit. And I've waived all of those permit fees as well. We want our residents to know that any measures that I need to take to assist with this recovery, I will do that and continue to do that. Definitely. And of course, as you talked about people needing the long term for this road to recovery, FEMA disaster recovery centers. I know have been set up in the parish. We try to announce those at some point every day. And then people also, I understand, have hundreds have already uh, benefited from the Blue Roof program. Yes, we have installed 339 blue roofs and there are 480 still with contracts. They look really good. I mean, I toured the parish all weekend and those professionally installed blue roofs look, look really good. So we're glad that our residents took advantage of that. And we do have FEMA resource centers, uh, mobile resource centers open. We're working to make those permanent. As you know, all of our infrastructure was damaged. So we've had a greater challenge with bringing up permanent sites for services because every library, every parish facility, just all of our buildings sustain some sort of damage. So right now we're working on mobile units everywhere with some of our resources and we are beginning to transition into more permanent locations for SBA and FEMA and all of those resources that our residents need. Yeah, there's so many different things you have to tackle. Is there one thing that stands out for you as the thing that just still feels insurmountable? Um, I would say that uh, garbage challenges, even though it has gotten better, our residents can see that it's gotten better. I mean, I was on the ground for the last two weekends with garbage crews and our, our garbage vendor has supplemented uh, those efforts as well. So we've, we've put in a lot of good work. We um, continue to do that, but it continues to be a challenge as everyone, you know, emptied their, their freezers and their refrigerators. And there were some challenges right before the storm um, with this particular service, but it has gotten better. 
We have gotten some good reports from residents that it is getting better. However, I won't feel comfortable until all of it is picked up off of the ground and we're working daily on that. Definitely. All right. And I know there's lots mm -hmm. of work ahead. So we wish you the best of luck with that. Jacqueline Hotard with St. John the Baptist Parish. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Sheba, for having me.